All right, I think we are live. And hello, everyone on Buffalo Fanatics. A good afternoon to you, boy, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Joe DeRosa for Buffalo Fanatics, and I am very excited to be with you guys today. Now, I want to apologize for being absent last week. Unfortunately, I was supposed to go to the Yankees. Well, not unfortunate, but I was supposed to go to the New York Yankees home opener with my sisters. The weather wasn't permitting, and the game got canceled. So, of course, I didn't have anything prepared for last week, and that resulted in me not being able to do my podcast or a Facebook Live for you guys. So I'm sorry about that, but I am here this week, and I'm very excited to be talking to you guys and doing my podcast once again. So... I want to give a quick shout out to Rico for helping me find out this week's topic. I got to admit, even though we are so close to the draft, it's kind of dry in the NFL right now. Not too much going on. Nothing crazy Bills related, at least. No trades have happened yet. We've really been stagnant in news for the past few weeks, a couple a, apart from a couple minor transactions. So unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot to talk about, and it's been kind of hard to find topics. But Rico helped me come up with one today that I'm very excited to go over with all of you guys. So shout out to him. I hope he saw this, or we'll see it later. So before we do begin, I just want to ask you guys to do two things for me, whoever's viewing right now. The first is to click the link and listen to the song that I have put for you, which is Everybody's Acting Crazy Nowadays by a band called Unknown Mortal Orchestra. And they're a band I love dearly. This album just released on Friday. I think it's a lot of fun to listen to. Very funky. It's got a very kind of retro sound to it. And a lot of their albums have this sound, but I think Unknown Mortal Orchestra has perfected it with each album. So I hope you can check it out too. Now for the people viewing today, the second thing I want you to do for me is just write in the comments, talk to me, and tell me if, you know, your opinion on the Buffalo Bills offseason. What's the grade you would give and why would you give it to them? Did you like the moves they made? Do you think there were left things left to be desired? Do you wish they could have retained people? Did you not like some of the trades they made? Just give me your opinion on that. I definitely want to hear it from all of you. And I'm going to keep up to date with your comments as well. So by the end of today's show, once I'm done getting everything out that I want to say, I can respond to some of your comments. So start getting on that right now. So as I mentioned before, Rico gave me today's idea. And today's topic is grading the offseason so far. So obviously the Bills have done a very, very, very large amount of transactions over the course of the past few months in both player transactions and coaching transactions that are obviously going to have a big impact on this team this upcoming year. And I wanted to just give my personal opinion on, you know, each one that I feel is significant enough to talk about and just kind of say if I like it, if I didn't like it, and kind of bring it on from there. And obviously, I want to stress that this is solely my opinion. None of you guys actually have to agree with it. You guys don't have to, you know, go along with everything I say. If you feel differently from me, feel free to let me know in the comments and tell me why. But ultimately, let's just keep it civil and have a nice, fun conversation because I think that'll make this whole experience a lot more fun to do. So let's go into the end of the 2017-2018 season where the Buffalo Bills made the playoffs for the first time in 17 years, where they go into the wild card round and are defeated by Jacksonville, not handedly because the defense was able to step up during the game, but the offense looked weak. There was really nothing going on apart from maybe a few nice runs by McCoy. Taylor didn't look great, and ultimately the game plan was a failure against a very stagnant Jacksonville defense. The team loses, the offseason begins, and certain things had to have happened to be going into the 2018 season. Obviously, there had to be changes made because certain things weren't working. So let's talk about some of those right now. Prior to free agency, arguably the biggest thing that happened is that Buffalo fired Rick Dennison. And I was one of the biggest fans of this move. I was not a very big fan of Rick Dennison. I do think that he didn't exactly have the best personnel in his system. But apart from that, it just didn't work. His offense didn't work. They looked weak so much. The receivers were just not working in this, or I should say Tyrod was not working in the system. He didn't make the receivers look good. And ultimately the offense just did not look great. It took shady time to adjust. And I just was not a fan of a West coast passing offense with Tyrod Taylor. So Rick Dennison gets canned and they bring in Brian Dable who spent the season as a coordinator for national champion, Alabama. He comes into Buffalo and I was a little skeptical of the move for me personally. It seemed a little weird that they were going for someone that was just a college coach when they had, you know, possible links to the Indianapolis offensive coordinator, maybe even John Filippo. 
I honestly thought they were going to go with someone from the NFL, but they decided to go with Brian Dable. He has connections to the Western New York area. He also has connections to McDermott, and he was in the New England Patriots offensive scheme. So I guess if you want to draw it from successful past experience, you do have that. However, as an offensive coordinator, he obviously doesn't have the greatest track record, but he also was on some pretty notably bad teams like Cleveland and Kansas City, where the offensive talent was just not there. What's up, Rico? I'm glad you're watching. So. Brian Dable is now our offensive coordinator, and I thought that this might be a good opportunity if they're going to draft a quarterback, because Brian Dable runs the Earl Perkins offense, and he's a bit more simplistic. It's not as complicated as a West Coast offense. The terminology is much more simple. So I think for any quarterback that they might end up drafting, it's going to be a lot better for them. It's going to be an easier transition, and Brian Dable has said that he's going to tailor the offense really to whoever gets drafted or whoever's starting under center. So for me, I think it's a good hire, but obviously it's a bit risky considering that his track record's a little shady. We'll have to see what he does on a limited or an offense that's limited in talent. So another thing that they did was they fired their defensive backs coach, Gilbert, and then brought in John Butler. At first, I was a little struck by this move. I liked Gilbert, and I thought he did a great job of the secondary, evidently by how well they performed. Trey White was amazing. Micah and Jordan Poyer were awesome. EJ Gaines, when healthy, was great and shut down. Sharice Wright, Sharice Wright. So he was a backup, and I don't really count it, even though he really wasn't that terrible, but also wasn't great. He was kind of mediocre. And... um Wow, I just completely blank. But ultimately, their corners and their safeties looked really good. The secondary looked really good. So I liked having Gilbert. But unfortunately, they moved on and brought in John Butler. Now, at first, I didn't really know much about him. I looked into it, and John Butler has a successful track record. He was on Houston, and obviously Houston's been known to have some pretty good secondaries and pretty good passing defenses, where I believe they rank second and third over the past two years, respectively. So... I'm okay with the hire. I think he'll do well with the person that we have this year in a 4-3. And I'm just waiting to see what he does ultimately when the season starts. So that was something that I felt was significant to talk about because if there are any changes in how the secondary plays this year, it's notable to mention that there was a coaching change as well. So now, before free agency frenzy began, we did have a couple of signings from people who just, you know, contracts expired. And that was Vontae Davis and Chris Ivory. Now, Vontae Davis, I am a fan of this signing. I think he'll work well in this defense. I love his attitude, and I love how excited he is to come to Buffalo. I am a little concerned with the age and the fact that he has some injury concerns. Throughout his career, he's been plagued by it. But ultimately, if he's healthy, I think he'll be just what we need. He'll be a nice fill-in for EJ Gaines, who we unfortunately lost to Cleveland. And I think he's going to do well as a starter. So I'm really hoping that Vontae can find himself healthy on the field every game this season and that he can play physical and be good for us. So the other one, Chris Ivory. Now, a lot of people were opposed to this move because Chris Ivory is old, and I get it. When you're above 30 years old and you're a power back, you start to decline. Maybe it won't be the greatest idea in the world. But you have to understand that this was solely for depth. And we didn't have a lot of salary cap room. We didn't have a lot of really anything. So we had to make the best of what we could get. Chris Ivory is a cheap option. He'll be a third down back, a power back, who can be there at the goal line or be there in short situations. And I really like the idea of having him. I just think he'll do well in this in this offense, behind this line, he'll be able to run and at least be serviceable enough for the one or for the two years we have him. If he gets hurt, I do think they are going to plan on drafting a young running back to get as well. So if they do that, he happens to perform better than Ivory, so be it. It's really not that expensive of a contract. A little pricier than I expected it to be, but for the most part, not that bad. So now, let's move on to free agency time. This is when things got crazy. So I'm going to just kind of talk about every transaction that happened. I know we've all heard about it. But again, just listing my opinion on what I think of each move. So Tyrod Taylor to Cleveland for a third round pick. I was okay with it. Although I would have liked to see what Tyrod could have done under Brian Dable, that it's not a West Coast offense. Maybe it could have been tailored to Taylor's strengths. Wow, I didn't realize I was going to actually do some wordplay with that one. But um, I didn't realize that uh, Tyrod... You know, he kind of regressed in a West Coast offense. I would have loved to have seen what Brian Dable could have done with him. Unfortunately, we'll never get the chance to see it, so I wish him nothing but the best in Cleveland. I do think that he might perform well there, especially with the personnel he has. Corey Coleman, Josh Gordon, Jarvis Landry, David Njaku, Duke Johnson out the backfield. I think their offense is going to look really good, and ultimately it's kind of his job to lose, even if they do draft a guy high. So like I said, would have loved to have seen what he could have done under Dable, but he gets traded for a third round pick and the Bills needed it for ammo if they want to move up. So I'm okay with it. And I just wish Tyrod Taylor the best. I won't go too deep into Tyrod talk because that'll incite a lot. So 
Trade Cordy Glenn to Cincinnati for a 12th pick as well as a fifth round pick. Absolutely loved this move. And this is why. Cordy Glenn is an amazing talent, but that dude could not stay on the field. Or if he was on on the field, he would not be healthy in his play. I think the fact that we were even able to use him as leverage to get number 12 was incredible for the sole reason that now we're at a point that we need to move up in the draft if we want to get a hot shot, top prospect quarterback. This helped us get in good position to at least make two trades on draft day. And ultimately, I don't think we're going to miss Cordy Glenn now that we have Deion Dawkins or we could just draft someone. So, you know, I wish him the best too. I do think he was a little too injury prone and the fact that we could get 12 for him was awesome. Now, some of the people we lost before we go into some of the new signings that we had. We lost Preston Brown, Cincinnati as well. I'm going to miss Preston Brown, but I think it's time for them to get younger and faster at linebacker. They lost EJ Gaines. EJ Gaines was great when he was healthy, but he wasn't healthy enough. So even though his play was definitely high level, that dude couldn't stay on the field. And it was maddening because we needed him in so many games. And in the stretches that he didn't play, the secondary suffered. So even though Vontae Davis might not necessarily be more dependable, I still think that it's possible that he could stay on the field. We don't know for sure, but ultimately... EJ Gaines was too injury prone and it was unfortunate to see. I loved his play, but he was wanting too much money for someone that might not play every single game. Deontay Thompson. I'm sad we lost Deontay Thompson. I really wanted him to come back to Buffalo. He was a good deep threat. Really fun to have and had great hands. I really don't know why that dude floated around as much as he did. I thought he deserved a role on this team. I just guess we didn't want to pay him the money he wanted, so he signed with Dallas, and I wish him the best too. I would have loved to bring Deontay Thompson back, and I'm sad that he's off the team. And Ryan Davis was also surprising. He kind of uh, flourished a bit in the system this year. I thought they would have brought him back for a cheap deal, but I guess he wanted more money. I actually am not familiar if he signed with anyone yet or if he's still floating in free agency, so someone can inform me that. But, yeah, he's gone too. So these are the people we lost, and I'm kind of upset about it. Deontay's definitely the personal you know, favorite of that group that we lost. I really wanted him to come back, so I'm sad he's gone. So now, free agency. We re-signed Kyle Williams, and I loved this move. He did get a, a, a little more money than I thought that they would have been giving him, but you need depth on that line. Kyle's a veteran. He knows the system, and he's a fantastic leader, and we all love Kyle Williams. He obviously doesn't play at the same level he did 10 years ago, but I think in a depth situation, he's going to be great. So I'm happy he's back for at least one more year. I hope we can get him a chip just because that dude has put in so much to this team, and he deserves it more than anyone I can think of. So now, free agent signings, no team, just separate. Star Lutulele, love the move. You need a solid run stuffer, even though he didn't exactly have the greatest year in Carolina last year, and even though it's kind of an expensive contract, I think he kind of regressed because he did really well under McDermott and didn't do well under uh, Wilkes. Now that he's back in McDermott's system, I think he's going to do really well. Change of pace for him might help, so I like the signing. Now, Trent Murphy. I'm super excited for this. Now, Trent Murphy did have a um, season-ending injury last year. It affected him, but I think he's going to come back strong. I think he's going to come back hungry with a chip on his shoulder on a new team. It's evident that he loves Buffalo. He drove all the way to Buffalo instead of taking a simple flight to get here, so I'm very happy that he's here. He's going to be playing D-end, and I'm excited to see him because I think he adds a much-needed pass rusher. We needed a quality pass rusher, and I think we finally got one, so as long as he's healthy, then I am A-OK -okay with this move, and I am so excited to watch him play. Now, A.J. McCarron. This was a fun move. I honestly didn't know who the Bills were going to get in that carousel of free agents, but A.J. McCarron was the one we ended up picking. Now, he obviously doesn't have a huge sample size in the NFL. He really just stepped in when Andy Dalton got hurt. He played in that one playoff game. It wasn't stellar. It wasn't anything crazy. But ultimately, the only reason they lost that game was to fumbles and the fact that Vontez and Pac-Man Jones are stupid. So. I mean, we have yet to see. Maybe he could shine in training camp. I don't know. But personally, I think he's here to be the backup again. If he wins the starting role or if they feel comfortable with starting him, then so be it. But I think his whole thing being in this system was just to be a backup or to at least mentor the possible draft pick that we do get. So let's see. Was Mike Waffle overrated? There was no difference in our D-line. I honestly thought he would be a good coach. I... When I saw the Rams D-line and how dominant they were over the past few years, I really thought Waffle was going to elevate it. But unfortunately, 
Nothing happened with the pass rush. It was pretty average, pretty bleak. So I know Waffle just retired, and maybe there were just he didn't have that same drive. We honestly don't know what went behind the scenes with him. He could have just been a little more laid back as opposed to past years and just didn't feel like giving it his all if he knew he was going to be out the door. But, again, I don't know for sure. I'm going to say yes to that question, but if someone wants to educate me, go for it. So now moving on. We signed Raphael Bush. Now, we needed depth at safety. I like the move. He wasn't too expensive, and he's had experience on the Saints. I don't expect him to be a starter, so I'm not, like, worried about it or anything. He'll be there if Hyde or Poyer need to come out and he needs to go in, so I'm okay with that 100%. Julian Stanford, special teams linebacker, low-tier guy, maybe could play on some snaps, but ultimately just to beef up the special teams. You know, it's I'm indifferent to some of these. Now, Marshall Newhouse, I do think we needed to get depth at tackle. I'm happy he's on the team. I love his Twitter account. That's unrelated and completely, you know, not talking his play. But seems like a nice guy. It seems like a good locker room presence, so I'm happy that we have him. But, yeah, we needed depth at tackle, so I'm glad we did sign him and we got him for a fairly reasonable deal. Russell Bodine, however, we needed depth at center, but I've seen the rampage from Cincinnati fans that he is just not good. He's basically a revolving door. So let's just hope he doesn't actually have to play and that Groy can stay healthy the entire year. Or I should say, let's just hope that he does not really see as much field time as we expect him to because I am not a fan of Russell Bodine. I don't think that he's a good center. We got him for depth and we got him for cheap. That's really the whole reason why he's on this team in the first place. So and Kalen Clay needed a receiver, needed a deep threat. I think Kalen Clay could be fine. We saw him in Buffalo. He had a couple of nice plays. Didn't get to retain him, but he started the year, kind of ju just rushed into the system after we traded Kevon Seymour, and he didn't really get a chance to learn the playbook, and, you know, West Coast's playbook is really complicated. I think he'll do a lot better this year now that he has a whole offseason to work with this offense. So I'm excited to see what Kalen Clay can do this year. I don't know if he'll be better than what Deontay was, but we'll have to see. And lastly, signed Philip Gaines. Now, People were freaking out about this. Philip Gaines wasn't great in Kansas City, and I get that. And I think he's going to be in here for the slot corner role. I don't know how he'll do there. I trust that McDermott can elevate his play. I've seen McDermott take EJ Gaines and turn him into a better corner. Maybe he could do the same thing with Philip Gaines. I'm not sure. But if it doesn't pan out, he's here for cheap, and he could be gone after next year. So, so be it. So that's the end of that. And all in all, based on everything we did so far, from coaching transactions to player transactions, trades, re-signings, whatever it is, I'm going to give these guys a solid B grade. No minus, no plus, no A's, no C's, solid B. And the reason I say that is because we have to remember that this team was at a disadvantage in free agency this year because their salary cap was so tight. They didn't have a lot of room to work with, and in spite of their tight salary cap, they still managed to get some key pieces to their D-line and a couple of key additions to both their secondary, the receiving core, and their offensive line. Maybe it's not the most glamorous player, maybe it's not the biggest name in free agency, but these are moves that they needed to do, so I I am happy that they got them done and that the D-line got beefed up because I think that was very important as well as other positions. Now, I would have liked to have seen them bring back a few people. Again, Deontay Thompson, Leonard Johnson. Thank you, Rico, because I was forgetting his name for some Rico. Some reason. <laughs> some Rico. Um, I forgot Leonard Johnson for some reason. I don't know why because – I don't know. I thought he played great, and I don't know where he ended up or if he's even still floating out there. I thought he should have been brought back for the slot corner role because he was a hard tackler, and he played extremely well in that position. So all in all, given the fact that we did manage to move Tyrod Taylor for a reasonable price, the fact that it's obvious that they're going to try and draft a quarterback in this draft, given that they still managed to beef up the D-line and that in spite of the fact that next year they're going to have a lot of cap room, they didn't have a lot of cap room this year, I thought they did a good job and the best they could have done. It couldn't be an A grade because it's so hard to do that when you don't have cap money. So B is my final grade for the Buffalo Bills offseason so far. Um, be sure to revisit this after the draft and see if I agree with the draft picks or not. And if they draft Josh Rosen, I'm telling you all right now, I'm going to be devoting my show to Josh Rosen because that is my quarterback in this draft and I want them to get him. So with that being said, I am going to stop ranting and I am going to read some of your comments. Now, guys, if you are watching this, please comment and give me something to read. I'm very excited and more than willing to respond to all of you. I want to hear your feedback and I'm going to take a sip of water and we're going to get this going. All right, let's do this. So the first thing, who are we going to read? Hopefully AJ surprises us. 
Man, that'd be great. I mean, you're, you're drafting a rookie quarterback, and if it happens to be a Rose and it happens to be a, May, a Mayfield, even though they say they're ready, they never played a snap in the NFL. So it's nice to know that your veteran quarterback can at least take the reins and play a little bit and show your backup what it's like to be in the NFL. If McCarron's good enough to do that, then so be it. I'll be all for it. I just don't know if McCarron is going to be good enough to hold a long-term starting role on this team. But if he does surprise us, then great. You know, I'm never going to root against any quarterback just because I wanted a specific one to do well. If Joe Webb came in last year and just ended up lighting it up for whatever reason, I would have been fine with it. We would have been winning games. And, I mean, unrelated, but as a Yankee fan who's been watching Giancarlo Stanton strike out seven times a game and the fact that that team somehow manages to be 500 right now, so be it. If the team finds ways to win games and their best player isn't producing, then at least they won that game. So in the case of A.J. McCarron, if A.J. McCarron plays well and our backup quarterback doesn't get any time, so be it. Let's see here. So far, so good with all the moves. I'm glad you feel that way. Again, I liked a lot of their moves in free agency, save for the Bodine signing and save for not bringing back Deontay for cheap. Um, I think they did everything they needed to do, or at least I should say they did everything they could possibly do on their limited budget. Boo. <laughs> Rosen's scared of his previous head injuries. I've heard things about that, and I've also heard things about how he's kind of a bad locker room presence, but I think that's kind of overblown. You hear that really every year. And, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not really concerned about Rosen's injury bug. I don't really think it's going to be an issue. I mean, when you draft someone so highly coveted, at least – the first thing I think that you should do is at least be aware of his past and then try to cater it so that he can at least I'm trying to think of how to word this. Like obviously you can't stop concussions in the NFL, but you can at least try to protect your quarterback. So if it case, if the case of them being concerned of Rosen's head injuries is a thing, maybe they could try to set it up so that he just gets the ball out super fast. I'm not sure. Personally, I think Rosen's going to be fine, but again, I can understand why someone would be a little afraid of his previous injuries. Just saying, Bill's holding private workout for Darnold. They also, haven't they held workouts for Mayfield and other quarterbacks as well? I mean, they can hold out as many private workouts as they want for any quarterback prospect, but we're not going to know who it is till draft day. I would hope that it's someone of Rosen or uh, Mayfield, but I personally don't think Darnold is going to be their answer. I think Darnold's getting taken by Cleveland number one, but that's my opinion, obviously. Why do you think we got rid of Gilbert? Ken, I have no idea. I, I literally have no clue. I didn't think there was any issue with him. I'm pretty sure um, the person they brought in has connections to McDermott. So if McDermott felt more comfortable with the – why did I forget his name? John Butler. If McDermott forget or had any connections with John Butler, then maybe that could be the reason he brought him in. But ultimately, I think they might have been, you know, Gilbert's decision to kind of walk away and they let him go. Or they just felt that they would do better with Butler. I really don't know for sure, though. Just saying, oh, no, I said that one. What is your opinion of Philip Gaines, of the Philip Gaines? Um, he didn't play well in Kansas City, but you need cornerback depth. Uh, they didn't bring back Leonard Johnson, so obviously we need to have someone to fill that slot corner role. Philip Gaines struggled there too, but I, again, said it before, I think McDermott elevates players well. I hope that Philip Gaines can thrive in the system, but if he doesn't, then we're just going to have to get rid of him. I'm a person who's going to root for him to do well, but I don't have too much confidence in him. I'm a little concerned. How do you feel about running back depth? Well, right now, as we saw, it's Shady, it's Chris Ivory, Tavares Cadet, and um, uh, Tywan Jones. So it could be better. Definitely the past few years we've had better running back depth, but I think Ivory is a good third down back. I am hope, holding out hope that they're going to draft a good running back in the draft, specifically Rashad Penny, because I think they need an all-purpose back, um, and definitely someone who's young and quick. Him, or if you even have time to go grab um, Chubb from Georgia or someone along those lines, then I'd be okay with it. Right now, I think it's not terrible, but I think it could definitely be improved with the draft. Gotcha. Thanks, Rico. Rico's here to clear us all or to um, give us the insight. I honestly had no idea that that's, that was the case. I thought it was really just all in Gilbert's hands. Do you think we keep three quarterbacks on the roster this year, Peterman, McCarron, and Rookie? Yeah, and I think that that whole thing is just because I don't see a need to get rid of Peterman yet if he's on a rookie deal. He's cheap. Uh, A.J. McCarron, you want to have someone who has NFL experience beyond just one year and that one year being only two games of starting. I think, I mean, 
I should say that McCarron doesn't really have a lot of years as a starter, but he's been in the NFL a lot longer than Peterman has. And Peterman last year struggled, so I think it's better to have someone who, when he played, didn't do too terrible. He was behind Andy Dalton. He was on a playoff team. So I think it's good to keep McCarron around, to keep Peterman around, in case that something goes wrong with either or. I'm just a fan of having three quarterbacks in general because I think it's just a good amount of depth. So that's my opinion. I don't think they're going to go with two. I think they're going to have three, which Peterman, McCarron, and whoever they end up drafting. Playoff, you think, this year? I mean, I'm always hoping for playoffs, man. You can never root against these guys. I want them to make the playoffs. I think their defense is going to be a lot better this year in terms of pass rush, in terms of stopping the run. They're definitely going to address that position more in draft. Their secondary is ready to go. Maybe one more corner if they happen to draft one high, and so be it. I think the defense is going to improve. The offense, maybe. I'm not sure. And that's my – if if I'm saying I want them to go, yes. If I'm saying I think, I don't know, and I'm going to hold out that – final decision until after the draft based on who they draft and you know how the offense ends up working out we don't have a huge amount of weapons but i think we have enough to make it work with mccoy with clay with kelvin benjamin it's ultimately dependent on who the quarterback is and we will see after the draft don't forget marcus murphy running bad stuff true forgot about him i hope he can shine i think did he he played in that game against miami i believe and i think he did fairly well so i mean if he stuns in camp then let him start i'm okay with it i like to get one of the top four quarterbacks but hate to give up too much to do it that's kind of the price you have to pay i understand the reservations people have about moving up i addressed this in past episodes i do think that moving up's a risk you're giving a lot of capital away and you don't want to do that because there are a lot of positions of need but you're going to win in this league if you have a good quarterback. I have a lot of faith in the prospects in this draft. I think they could be franchise quarterbacks, specifically Rosen. If he's trained right, Darnold, Mayfield, Allen, if he goes to the right team. I don't think Buffalo is where he should be, though. But I think that that franchise quarterback prospect is there. And if you want someone who's going to lead your team for years to come, then giving up some assets in this draft to ensure that and a person you can build around, to me, is worth it. But I do understand the kind of fear that people have. I agree with that, Sharif Cole. Good late round backs. If they decide to go in the third, fourth, or fifth round, or even later than that, so be it. Again, running backs are a dime a dozen, so I'm never opposed to them just waiting and taking one. They could shine. Let's see. AJ's height and knowing how to work the pocket gets me excited. Yeah, and I mean, I said it before, Dable's going to tailor the offense to whoever the quarterback is. So if we decide that we want to run with McCarron, I'm sure Dable has something drawn up for that. And I like A.J. McCarron. I don't think he's bad by any means. He hasn't gotten a chance to start because Andy Dalton's been a quality starter too. So it's not like he's been so terrible he hasn't gotten his time to shine. He's playing a few games, and he wasn't bad. And I think more experience in the NFL would be good for him. But ultimately, if we have this highly coveted prospect, I don't think McCarron would be the person that would be starting because why would you draft this person if McCarron was just going to end up being a long-term starter? I think the most McCarron could be is someone to fill the gap until the the person we end up drafting is ready to go. If they don't draft someone high and they decide to wait for someone like Wall Letter or Falk, then I would think McCarron might actually be the starter. Hey, Josh Allen, but if he develops to become the starter, then we should root for him and hope that he succeeds. I mean, it's like I said before, Jerry, if, if – you draft someone, you have to root for them. Don't hate it. Like, I mean, it's going to discourage a young kid coming to Buffalo to see comments on Twitter and everything saying, we made a mistake. Why would you do this? Like, if Josh Allen gets drafted, I'm not the biggest Josh Allen fan, but I'm going to root for him to be successful. I want him to be successful because I want the team to be successful. But I just don't think he'll fit well here. Should they draft him, then that's going to be the person I'm going to root for until the day he decides to leave, gets traded, or if he does well, then my new favorite quarterback. <laughs> how dare you running backs are not a, di a dime a dozen but your tongue rico i'm sorry to hurt you but i just think you can find good running backs in later rounds i mean don't get me wrong you can have coveted and elite talent but i think running backs can be developed to do very well even if they're drafted later on i mean mike gillisley wasn't our high pick and even though he's not doing well in new england he did really well in buffalo i think the only reason he's not doing well in new england is because he's just not a scheme fit for them but I think you could find someone in the fourth, fifth, sixth, wherever round on the late side of the draft, and he could turn out to be good. That's just the way I feel about running backs. It's a position where, you know what, I'm not even going to get into that, because to be quite honest, I never played running back, so I don't even want to say that, but I just feel that running backs are a dime a dozen. So let's see here. Look we'll for more on this.
Uh, Bush is an underrated signing. Stay woke. So Rico, I mean, again, I like him as a deaf signing. I'm I'm hyped to see him. I hope he works out. You know, if if he comes in when uh, you don't have Hoyer, if you don't have Hyde, wherever he decides, wherever they decide to put him in this defense and plays well, then I'll be hyped. Respect the word. <laughs> I love it. Listen, man. Again, if they draft a running back high, I'm okay with it. I want you guys to know one thing is that even if I dislike a prospect, I'm ready for these guys to come in and do well. And if they do do well, then I will eat my words. It's the same thing. Like if Josh Allen gets drafted by this team and he turns out to be the quarterback we've waited for all these years, then I'm okay with it. So it looks like you guys are slowing down on the comments. So I appreciate you guys giving me some feedback today. I had a lot of fun doing this. And once again, a quick shout out to Rico for giving me the topic here and for giving me some comments to work with. I'm sorry I struck a nerve with uh, that running back, the running back. If we don't go quarterback at 12, what and who do you like? So I did this in my draft, my projected draft last week. I said in a hypothetical that they don't move up. And if they stay at 12, and if it's not a quarterback, and if Roquan Smith or um, either of the linebackers are there, I hope Roquan Smith's there. I think he could be at 12, and I would want them to draft him there because I think he's a freak, personally. I think that dude is fast. I think he's physical. I think he's really good at recognizing plays and can just storm the quarterback if he needs to. So I'm okay with that. But, again, I personally think quarterback's the move. We do need DT help. Yep, I agree. We do need DT help, and I think they're going to draft that. All right, that's all I got for you guys this week. Once again, shout out to Rico, and thank you to everyone who commented today. Podcast will be posted later on today, so stay tuned for that. For Buffalo Fanatics, my name is Joe DeRosa. Go Bills, and have a beautiful Monday. Stay tuned.